Uh, who's ready for the second best Christmas ever? How about that? You guys ready? Yeah, let's do this. Uh, the whole idea that we're diving into this Christmas season is the reality that the best Christmas ever is the Christmas where God gave us the most extraordinary gift that we could ever hope to receive. Uh, we've been celebrating that here at our Goshen campus with Bethlehem Live. It's the gift of Jesus. And uh, I've got to be honest, I've had the chance to be at the last scene of this event uh, and share that moment with a lot of people that walked through. I think there was like 1,500 people that walked through last night. And it's a great moment. I, that's cool, you guys. That's, that's awesome. And we're able to share this beautiful moment that changes everything with them. And to see that, that moment of wonder when the scene lights up and the, the manger scene is right there, and then mostly people are like, there's a camel. I, that's how it, it goes down. But, I mean, that's an extraordinary moment that changed everything. And because of that moment, I hope that you will never forget, man, Jesus gives us hope. He gives us peace that passes understanding. He gives us the ability to have joy in any circumstance. It's the fullness of, of God's love for us. And that is the gift that we celebrate that, that we get to receive from Jesus at Christmas. This is the gift that God gave us. It's Jesus. And it's the greatest gift ever. I mean, that Christmas when God became man and expressed his love for us, that was the best Christmas ever. And what we're trying to grapple with this Christmas season is the reality that the second best Christmas ever is the Christmas where I receive that gift that God gives me. When I encounter his love, when I experience his joy and his peace because of the hope that I have when I put my trust in him, that becomes the second best Christmas ever because that gift that God has given me has been received. And that changes everything. And if you're here and you've encountered the love of Jesus, can we just give him some, some praise and some glory? Because he's good. He's changed everything. And that's a gift, man. That there's no greater gift. I think uh, when we're kids, there's that anticipation, right, of the gifts that we are about to open. And honestly, throughout my experience as a child, there were a lot of Christmases where I felt a little let down. Anybody with me on that? Like, you're looking forward to Christmas, you get the gifts, and like, yes, and then you open the gift, and you're like, what is this? I remember going to visit my grandparents down in Stewart, Florida, one Christmas, and uh, my grandma was notoriously cheap. And I've told some of you this before, you know this, but when I opened my present from my grandma, I'm going, maybe this is the year that they go all in, that they're going to spoil us grandkids. This is the one. I opened the present, and it's a sweatshirt that had a tear in it that had been stitched up right there. And my grandma was like, I got that for $4 because of just that little patch. I'm going, thank you, grandma. Like, meh. You know, I was like 15 years old, so there's one more gift. I'm like, well, maybe that was like the cheap gift. Maybe that was the afterthought. This will be the one. And I opened that one, and it was underwear. I'm going, underwear? What? It was like for like kids 10 to 12, you know, and I'm, I'm 15. I'm going, thanks, Grandma. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Uh, we were just laughing about this as a family yesterday, last year at Christmas, we got the boys <laughs> presents, and one of those presents were, were books. They, they had a book, and uh, when one of my sons, who will not be named because he's in the room, uh, opened that present, uh, he said, what is this? You know I don't read. <laughs> uh, not, not the greatest gift, I guess. Okay. Good luck with life. Not reading. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so sometimes we look forward with great anticipation to the gifts that we are about to receive. And what's great about Christmas is that, man, there's a gap, right, between the Old Testament and the New Testament of, of 400 years where all of these prophets in the Old Testament were prophesying about this Messiah that was to come and save the world and who was going to come and change everything. And then God just goes silent. And for 400 years, people are just looking forward with anticipation and with expectation of how this promise is going to be fulfilled. And this is the moment that all of that expectation, anticipation leads up to, the birth of Jesus the greatest gift that we could ever hope to be given. It represents hope, joy, peace. 
God's love that offers forgiveness, a restored relationship with God. It changes everything. This is a gift that does not disappoint. And I just want to encourage you as we lean into this topic this Christmas season, as today we specifically talk about the hope that we have in Jesus, I just want you to think about how that hope really does change everything. The hope that we have in Jesus. Hope for today, hope for tomorrow, hope for eternity. That hope, it matters. And there are people all around us who are desperate for that hope. So just think about that as we dive into the Christmas story and think about how the hope of Jesus really does change everything. Now, in Luke chapter 1, this is where we're starting this series. Uh, It's at the beginning, right, where it all begins And remember, there's been 400 years of silence. There's just been this expectation and anticipation of what God was going to do. And here's where the story begins to come to life. It says in Luke 1, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David, Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Now, listen, you need to know this. Every time we read the Bible and like an angel appears to someone, we look at that, you know, thousands of years later, like, oh, what a beautiful moment that is. This was terrifying, all right? This was awful. Like, what is that? Ah! That's what happened in this moment. This is not normal. This was not expected. An angel of God appears to Mary and and starts to change everything. But in this moment, I think it's important that we lean into how this conversation begins. Gabriel appears to Mary. He says, greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Man, can we just stop and think about the significance of that statement? The Lord is with you. And in this moment, God has been silent for 400 years. These people have been struggling. They've been looking forward. They've been anticipating God's fulfillment, His promise. But God's been silent. And to be reassured in this moment with this truth really is a game changer. God is with you. And I want you to know today that in your life, no matter what situation you find yourself facing, God is with you too. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. He will not abandon you. He is right there with you. And when we talk about this idea of hope today and what that means and why it is so significant, I want you to know today that hope, it believes in God's presence. That's where it all starts. God is with you. That's me putting my hope in Jesus and and just trusting that he is here. And right now, I got to be honest with you, I think that that matters more than ever because people right now in our culture, we are surrounded in our communities by people who are desperate for hope. They are searching for something because without God, without Jesus, there is no hope. Joy is fleeting You don't get to experience that peace that comes from knowing Jesus. You have not yet encountered the love that God has for you. This is a big deal. God is with you and hope, it believes in God's presence no matter what situation you find yourself in. And in this season that we find ourselves in, honestly, the last couple months have been tough for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that I care about that are part of our church family who've just experienced loss or they've been discouraged. And hope, that, that belief that God is with you, man, that matters. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what? We fear no evil. Why? Because God is with us. He comforts us. He protects us. He anoints our head with oil. We continue to walk in his blessing and in his favor. And even in the darkest moments, we see in Psalm 23, my my cup, my heart, it still can overflow because he's here. And I want to encourage you today. It it might be a, a difficult time for you. You might be struggling. Christmas is not always a great season for people. You grieve. And if you've experienced loss 
or you're discouraged this Christmas season, I want to I encourage you with something. It has to do with hope. I think a lot of times when we go through difficult times, especially loss, I think what we do is we have to take time to grieve, right? We, we grieve what was lost. These are difficult times. Life isn't always easy. And in those moments, we grieve. Sometimes we question. Sometimes we get angry with God. And we have to work through that process. But we grieve. We grieve what was lost. But then we have to celebrate what was good. Because there's always something to celebrate. If you've lost something, if you're grieving, it's because what you lost, it mattered. It impacted your life. It was influential. And so you've got to grieve what was lost, but you have to celebrate what was good. Celebrate the impact. Celebrate the legacy. Think about how you can put that into practice in in your life and leave that same kind of legacy, right? You grieve what was lost. You celebrate what was good. But man, when you put your trust in Jesus, let me tell you guys, that's not where it ends. You now get to hope for what is to come. And you guys, that changes everything. The hope that we have for today, the hope that we have for tomorrow, the hope that we have for eternity, that we only find in Jesus. That is this gift that we have been given. It's hope that, man, God is, God is with us. Jesus is preparing a place for us. He longs for us to be with him for eternity. You guys, that kind of hope is an anchor for our soul. It says in Hebrews 6, that hope is an anchor. It is firm and it is secure. And this matters. This gift of Jesus, it gives us hope, and that changes everything. So hope believes in God's presence. That's where it starts. And we see that in this story with Mary. Now it goes on to say, confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God, which again, that's good to hear because an angel has appeared, you're terrified, you want them to say something like that, like this isn't a bad experience, like it's, you know, it's not like the angel of death coming for you, like hey, hey, I'm not that one, I'm here to tell you you're blessed, I have good news, I have good news, you found favor. Don't be afraid for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asks the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin, which is the perfect response to that moment, right? Like, uh, hey, time out. Hey, angel, this is terrifying, and you're amazing. And you've just said a lot of stuff, but honestly, I tuned it all out after you started by saying, hey, Mary, you're going to give birth to a son, and you're going to name him Jesus. And then the rest of the the message that the angel has, kind of like, hey, question, (laughs) how can this happen? And I mean, put yourself in that situation, right? Like, this is so overwhelming. This is incredible. Like, this is not an easy situation for Mary to navigate. Again, I think we look at these stories in the Bible through rose-colored glasses because we know how the story ends. Like, oh, what a beautiful story. This was difficult. This is hard situation to navigate. How do you comprehend what God is doing? How do you figure out what, what he's trying to do? What's the plan? What's the purpose? What's going on? Mary's trying to figure this out. How can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. I feel like Mary's still probably going, what? I I just, I don't know. I don't know. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. I got to be honest with you. I think that in terms of how we respond to the situation that God puts in our way, in our path, in our lives, how we fulfill the purpose and the plan that he has for us, And how we live fully into that plan. How we make sure that we don't miss a single thing that God has in store for us. I think it all hinges on the way that Mary responded. Think about this. She's just been overwhelmed with all this news. It just, it's it's crazy, right? How does this possibly make sense? But Mary has, I guess, 
enough sense to just say, you know, may it be as you have said, I, I am the Lord's servant. I think throughout Scripture we see this attitude and this response over and over again in the lives of people who God used in great and mighty ways. It's that attitude that just says, God, here I am. I, I don't really know <laughs> what it is that you're doing or what you're up to. This really is beyond me. It doesn't make any sense. But, you know, I trust, God, that you can see farther down the road of life than I can. And I'm going to put my trust in you. Here I am. I would contend with you today that if you're on that journey, you're trying to figure out what is God's plan for me, what is God's purpose, I'm confused. I'm a little disturbed. I'm in, in camp with Mary. Uh, that's the best possible response you could have. God, here I am. I am here to serve you. Because I would contend with you today that if that is the attitude of your heart, you're saying, Jesus, here I am. Use me. You are going to find yourself exactly where God wants you to be. You will realize that you are fulfilling the purpose and the plan that he has for you. I would like to think that <laughs> there's a voice from heaven that, you know, speaks, this is your purpose. That'd be fantastic, right? Or that it lights up in the sky. We were outside for Bethlehem Live Friday night, and we saw the stream of 60 satellites go above. Did anybody else see that? I, I saw that for the first time. I'm going, what is happening right now? Like, we live in the future. Elon Musk's string of 60 satellites went across the sky. That's real. I'm not making That's actually real. You can Google that. It went across the sky. I'm going, okay, we're just showing off now. This is crazy. We live in the future. We are the Jetsons. I mean, it's real. It happened. <laughs> um, but the reality is, you know, we'd like to think that when it comes to the purpose and the plan that God has for us, that he just tells us, hey, here's your plan. Go, go, go. But that's not how it works. I, I tell you, in my life, I've always just opened the doors that God opened and walked through them. God, here I am. Never really knew what that looked like. I don't know what my continued purpose and plan is for me. And yet, if every day I'm saying, God, here I am, whatever opportunities you present to me, whatever people that you bring into my life that I can be your hands and feet to, whatever situations that you allow me to participate in, whatever doors you open, God, I will walk through I'm telling you, you will find yourself exactly where God wants you to be. I look back at my life and I can see so clearly God was with me every step of the way, even when I didn't understand what was going on, even when I was experiencing pain. Honestly, when I look back at my life, the most painful times are the times when I realize, looking back, God showed up in the biggest way. So keep taking those next steps. Walk with that attitude of, here I am. You're going to find yourself exactly where God wants you to be. Hope, man, it believes in God's presence, but it also believes in God's plan. It trusts that even when life doesn't quite make sense, God still sees farther down the road of life than we do, and we can put our trust in him. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He is with you. He has a purpose and a plan for you. Respond with that same attitude that Mary had. Here I am. And you're going to be exactly where God wants you to be. So this story concludes in verses 39 through 45. It says, A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. I think a lot of times we read through this passage of Scripture and kind of overlook this moment, but this is a huge moment for Mary. This is just a few days after the encounter with the angel. She's still a little overwhelmed trying to grapple with what God is doing. She goes to visit her relative, and the first thing she says is a confirmation of what God had just told her. Think about how significant that is. God has been silent. Everyone's been looking forward with anticipation to what he was going to do, and Mary is realizing, an angel has appeared to me. My relative Elizabeth has now prophesied to me and confirmed what the angel just told me, this is happening. Elizabeth was an encouragement to her in this journey. And think about the statement, how, how much this matters. 
in verse 45, when she finishes that by saying, you are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. That means that Mary's attitude this whole time was just trusting in what God had promised her, that he would be faithful, that he would come through. And I think that when it comes to hope, hope, it starts by believing in God's presence. God is with you. It believes in God's plan. You can trust Jesus. He has a purpose and a plan for you. Even when it's dark, even when you're walking through a valley, he's with you. Trust in that plan for your life. Come to him with that attitude of surrender. Here I am. I'm ready. But I think the biggest piece is hope then believes in God's promise. It's me trusting that what God has told me is going to happen is actually going to come true. That is the hope that anchors our soul. It is firm and secure and nothing can move that. I would contend with you today that when it comes to faith, faith and hope, I think, blend together really well. Because faith is me putting my trust in God. It's, it's putting that trust into action and, and putting that into practice in my life. That's what faith is. And faith, man, that's, that's the first step to receiving the gift that God gives us. I say yes to Jesus. I put my trust in him. God, I believe in what you have done. And I'm running with that. I'm putting that into action in my life. But hope then becomes faith in the future tense, right? Because it's looking forward with more anticipation, with more expectation into what God is going to do. Hope trusts in God's promises for our life. And if you believe that God sent his son to pay the price that you couldn't pay, to offer you forgiveness, to set you free, to restore that relationship with God that has been broken, to give you joy and peace, to fully experience the love that he has for you, then that hope that we have in everything that God has done, it changes everything. Because it is a hope not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but for eternity. It is a hope that we have for our future. That is us trusting in God's promises for our life. And it changes everything. Because of Jesus, we have hope. And I want to encourage you today with that reality. Because again, you might be struggling. You might be in a place where you've been walking through the valley and it's not been pleasant. You might be discouraged. It might be a season where you're really struggling to figure out what is that next step that God's calling you to. I, I want to encourage you today. God's with you. Believe that he is present. I'm going to encourage you again. again. He has not forgotten you. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. It doesn't matter what you've done, how you came to this place, what the past looks like. God's not done with you. If you approach him with that attitude, God, here I am. He has a purpose and he has a plan for you. Lean into that. Draw close to him because he's going to draw close to you. You will experience life to the fullest. It's hope. Changes everything. And I want to encourage you again. You have a future. And God loves you so much that he's given you this extraordinary gift. And all we have to do is receive it. That best Christmas ever. (laughs) <laughs> the one where Jesus came to planet earth changed everything. But the second best Christmas ever, I think, are these moments where we encounter that love and we receive that gift. So claim it. Claim the gift. Claim the hope that God has for you today and walk in his promises for your life because he cares, he's here, and you can trust in the plan that he has for you. I'd like to invite you to close today by just bowing your head and closing your eyes. As we think about this moment and what it means, I just, I want to encourage you today to cling to that hope that we have in Jesus because, man, he's, he's good. He loves you with an extravagant love, and he's with you. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's right there. And I want to challenge you as we come to a close today just to, to take a step toward Jesus today. If you've received that gift of Jesus, you've experienced his love in your life, I would just encourage you today that you can experience the fullness of his joy and his peace by putting your trust in him, trusting him with the situation that you're facing. You can overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of Jesus working in you and through you. I encourage you to claim that hope today. Claim the gift that God has offered you. And honestly, as everyone still has their head bowed and eyes closed, I just want to encourage you to think about 
the reality that you might be sitting here today and you realize, I've never, never really realized the gift that God has given me. And as we've talked about it today, I've realized I've never actually received that gift. I've never actually said yes to Jesus. I want to invite you this morning to take a step, to take a step toward Jesus and to say yes to him. Because that is where your Christmas goes to the next level. That's where you can experience the second best Christmas ever because you encountered God's love for you. And so as we close today, I'm going to invite everybody to just say yes to Jesus. And if you're already a follower of Christ in this moment, may this be a prayer where you just say, yes, Jesus, I'm here. Here I am. Use me. But maybe this will be the first time you say yes. And honestly, if it is, I'd love to celebrate this moment with you. When this service is complete, we would love to celebrate with you, to give you a free Bible and help you take the next steps. We have pastors waiting at the side of, of this worship center, at the side doors to talk with you. And as you respond, I'll just encourage you today. Take the step. Say yes to this gift that God has given us. So would you stand with me? Would you stand together? And as we close, wherever you're at today, whether you're right here in this room, whether you're joining us in Mishawaka or St. Pete, this is a moment where I invite you to say yes to the hope that we have in Jesus. Let's pray this together. Jesus, I need you. I believe you are the Savior of the world, that you gave your life to forgive my sins, and that God raised you from the grave so that I could have eternal life. Thank you for loving me. I am saying yes to you, Jesus. Come into my life. I will follow you. Amen.